Hello everyone, this is Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I want to take a few minutes here to talk about the Ryzen 5 processors due to launch in just a few days on April the 11th. Now you see on your screen here that we have four SKUs of the Ryzen 5 processor. We have two of them being four cores and eight thread SKUs, and two of them being six cores and 12 threads. Now, depending on your use case, each of these processors offers something very different. So I'm gonna sort of go through each one of these and figure out where you may be and in which processor may actually fit best with what you're trying to do with your system. So we'll start with the Ryzen 5 1400. Retailing at just $169, it gives you great value, or at least it should give you great value for its very low cost. Now, What's gonna be attractive about this processor is that it will give you a full eight threads at a very low price point compared to even the uh, Intel i5 processors, which typically run on the low end near that $200 price point. Now the first thing I wanna point out with the Ryzen 5 processors, specifically on the low end with the 1400, is its default cooler. The Ryzen 1400 will Retail with the Wraith Stealth Cooler, which is sort of a step down from the Wraith Spire Cooler that we've seen with the Ryzen 7 1700 already. And now we're also going to see the Spire Cooler with the 1600 and the 1500X. Now this is actually an important thing to note. If you are planning to overclock your processor, you're going to want to replace this Wraith Stealth Cooler with something a little beefier. Now we've seen reports of people getting their Ryzen 7 1700s up to as high as 3.9 gigahertz with a Wraith Spire cooler. So if we go back to our prices here, it looks like the 1500X is an overall better value based on overclocking. The reason for that is with your 1400, you're going to need to replace that stock cooler if you expect to get anywhere near 4.0 gigahertz on top of that, I sort of expect the 1500X to be just a better overall bin chip than the 1400 should be. Coming with the Spire cooler, the 1500X may be able to reach nearly 4.0 gigahertz without an additional aftermarket cooler with the Spire cooler compared to the 1400, which will have the Wraith Stealth cooler. So, if you plan on overclocking your Ryzen 5 processor and you're looking at the bottom two, the four core and eight thread SKUs, you should really separate your decision based on that overclock. If you do plan on overclocking, the 1500X may be the overall better value for you. If you do not plan on overclocking, the 1400 may be a better overall value. However, I will also note, if you're gonna get that Ryzen 5 1400 and not overclock it, you may want to go ahead and pick up an A320 motherboard. Now the reason for that is very simple. The X370 and B350 motherboard do offer more overall options for you, especially in the areas of expandability. But if you look on this chart to the far right column, you'll notice that overclocking is locked on the A320 boards. If you're not planning to overclock your Ryzen 5 part, that may be a deciding factor. Now, obviously, you can put any Ryzen part in any of these motherboards, but the A320 boards are considerably cheaper than the B350 and especially the X370 boards. Unfortunately, right now, as of the recording of this video, there's only one A320 board on Newegg.com that I could find, and that is the Gigabyte GA A320 MHD2. It's a micro ATX motherboard that gives you two RAM DIMM slots, but does support DDR4 up to 3200 megahertz. Now, obviously, the number one sort of selling point of this motherboard is gonna be that $70 price tag. If you're building on a budget, pairing this $70 board with the $169 AMD Ryzen 5 1400 may be a great way to shave money off of the platform and allow you to spend more on your graphics card solution, which will obviously have a bigger impact on your gaming performance than will your processor. Now, if we look at the middle of the lineup, the 1500X and 1600 are separated by just $30. That extra $30 will buy you an additional two cores and thus four threads on your processor. Here's a very general recommendation. 
if you are only gaming, then the 1500X, for the time being at least, will be more than adequate. And in fact, most games won't take advantage of the full 6 cores and 12 threads at any given time. That being said, if you want to talk about, and I hate talking about this by the way, the whole future-proof argument, then the Ryzen 5 1600 suddenly becomes a better value for you because it does offer more cores and more threads, and if AMD is to be believed, game developers will be working towards optimizing their games for higher core and thread counts now that Ryzen is on the market. There's really no wrong decision here, although again, if you're on a budget, and you're planning on overclocking your processor, I tend to favor the 1500X. Right now, it's going to give you equal performance or very near equal performance to the 1600, provided they're running the similar clock speeds, and you'll be able to take that $30 you saved by not getting the 1600 and reinvest it in a graphics card, perhaps, which, like I already said, will give you a bigger value in FPS for your games than will an upgraded CPU. And finally, I do want to talk about the 1600 and the 1600X. Now, I'm going to go ahead and call this just the way I call the Ryzen 7 SKUs, and that is, if you're looking at the 6-core 12-thread parts, go ahead and just pick up the 1600. The reason for that is these parts with adequate cooling will both reach near 4.0 gigahertz, but probably not really at all above that. If you're extremely lucky, you might get a part that may be able to hit 4.1 gigahertz with a crap ton of voltage running through it as well, something like 1.45 maybe. And as I've already said, there have been some reports of very successful Ryzen 7 1700 overclocking to nearly 4.0 GHz with the stock Wraith Spire cooler. Now you'll notice on this chart that the AMD Ryzen 5 1600X does not come with a stock cooler at all. In fact, AMD expects you to provide your own cooler because if you're getting the 1600X, you're more likely to be an enthusiast. So if you take the $30 price point difference between the 1600 and 1600X and then add at least another $30 for a decent little cooler, we're really talking about more of a $60 difference unless you already have a cooler that you're transferring over and you've acquired a bracket or it already works with AM4. And if you want to see if your cooler will work with AM4, you can click on the card shown above. Now, my sort of final thought on that is even with the aftermarket cooler, both these chips, the Ryzen 5 1600 and 1600X, will come near 4.0 GHz. They may land on it. They may land slightly above it. They may land slightly below it. But regardless, they're going to be within a couple hundred megahertz of each other on the far ends of the scales. And frankly, the $60 that you're actually going to probably be spending between the two is really just not worth it. Heck, even if you already have your own cooler and the Delta is still only $30, I would still favor the 1600 just because you're saving that $30. Again, you can reinvest it somewhere else in your system like a better graphics card. So hopefully you enjoyed my look at the Ryzen 5 lineup and hopefully this video does help you sort of decide where you may fall if you're looking at Ryzen 5 parts. If you do like this video, you can give me a like, share, comment, all those things down below. They help out a lot. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware and I'll see you guys in the next video.